Hey, Boaz here from Next Pittsburgh. I'm here in Warrendale. We're checking out Microback, which is a third-party testing company, which means that they do all sorts of testing for food testing, water testing, but we're going to tell you more inside. Hey, Trevor, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Gosh, thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. I'm happy to show you around the lab. Okay, well, I see you've got a lab coat on. Is that something I should wear, too? Yeah, we're going to walk through the lab. We're going to see what the experiments are and how they're running them on a day-to-day -day basis, so you got to be prepared. Okay, gosh, let's take a look. So how big is this lab? So this lab's around, I believe, 30 square, 30,000 square feet. Uh, we run on two different sides, both an environmental and a food division. Uh, and we do testing all over uh, for our clients across the U.S., but mostly based around this location. And so... Microback is based in Pittsburgh. Yes, we are based here. Our corporate headquarters is in Pittsburgh. Our largest laboratory is here in Pittsburgh, uh, but we have about 30 locations across the U.S. Gosh, okay, are we going to go in here first? I'm uh, just going to stand out here. This is actually a room that we cannot enter. This is where we do gluten allergens. Oh my gosh, the gluten laboratory. Wow, it's like something out of Willy Wonka. Yes, so uh, there's a big nine allergens that are commonly recalled, and gluten is probably the most popular one. So this lab runs a lot of gluten testing here, uh, but we can't walk in here because allergens are parts per million or parts per billion, so very small amounts. So if we walk in, we could potentially carry in those allergens and cross-contaminate samples. Oh, wow. There's a lot of little Petri dishes here. Yes. Um, so this is where we process our food samples. Uh, we receive both food in ingredient forms, finished forms. We also receive environmental monitoring samples. So that would be samples that you would take off of your belt or your floor or the walls around where you make food. And we test it for pathogens, things like... So who's sending it to you, like... McDonald's or like Chipotle or something? We mostly are working with manufacturers, so the people who are supplying McDonald's, supplying Chipotle, supplying some of the groceries that you buy on a day-to-day -day basis at your favorite grocery store. And so what are they sending you? Like they're like swabbing the conveyor belt or something? Yeah, so they can send us swabs uh, and of the environment that they take. They also send us raw ingredients, so the things that they use to make your protein bars and the finished product of cookies, protein bars, whatever they're actually selling on the market. All those can get sent to us. So can you like walk us through? So what, like, what do you get in the mail? Uh, so we receive samples like this. This is actually a sponge that they take of the environment. Um, we've enriched this sample already, but normally it's just a dry sponge that comes in and we add media to it. You just put a little lemonade in there. Yeah, just a little lemonade. Um, the media is designed to grow the target bacteria. So this media will grow listeria or grow salmonella or E. coli, whatever they're actually looking for or targeting in their testing. And we also do enumeration testing, too. You can see them plating these samples here. Uh, they will take the sample, they will put it in solution, and they will put some of that sample on each of these plates and look for specific bacteria or specific organisms. And these samples came from the sponges also? Uh, they can come from sponges. They can also come from finished products like this. We have just received a bunch of meat chunks in the mail. Oh, my gosh. Um, they're meat chunks. Like cheese or tofu. And are these, like, Spices? It just looks like a ton of like... Um, that actually looks like grain or peanuts. These look like peanuts or granola. Uh, these could be raw ingredients. They could be the finished product that they sell. So it could be a variety of things. Anything. So they're making a protein bar. It has like almond flour in there. And they're going to take some of that almond flour, put it in a bag, and send it to you. And you'll test it. Yep. We'll get everything that they use, whether it's uh, the flour that they use or the finished product that's got all the chocolate and everything ingredients added all at once as well. Oh, okay. Well, let's see some incubation. Yeah, we'll walk into the incubators. Oh, yes. it's it's warm in here. It's toasty. So this is a higher temperature. We are. We should make tank top lab coats for this. Uh, it's a very sweaty experience sometimes, but these labs, uh, these incubators can be around body temperature or hotter, uh, because we're looking for the bacteria to grow in the best conditions. Um, so here you can actually see some of those samples and plates enriched. Okay, over here, there's like something gnarly happening in here. There's like... Actually, salmonella plates. So those plates are isolating and looking for salmonella growth. You can actually see on here, this is actually plate counts from bacteria, and all those little red dots are different bacteria that we were able to detect in that sample. And so every one of these spots is bacteria? Yes, these are what we call colony forming units, and each colony is believed to start from a single cell of bacteria. And we've plated a food sample onto these, and now we would go through and count to actually all of these spots and identify as what kind of bacteria it could potentially be. That's aerobic plate count, so that's all bacteria, but you can see here's a plate that has different reactions on it, and some of that's coliform, and some of that is E. coli. This is beautiful. Do you ever do like little art shows when you get really cool looking ones? Uh, yeah, we do a lot of different media that changes colors and has interesting reactions. We even sometimes draw on them while we're doing our experiments or testing our media just to get some kind of cool pictures yeah. because some of them have really cool reactions and they look really neat after growth happens on them. So this is one of my favorite medias to work with. And so what does this mean, what we're looking at? So this is EMB media and this reaction with the green shimmery is actually growth of E. coli. Who knew E. coli could be so beautiful? It's one of my favorite organisms. <laughs> 
Um, oh my gosh, that looks so nasty in there. Wow, those sponges got gross. We make all that media in-house, and it is sterile when we add it, but then that bacteria over a period of time starts to grow, and it will change the way that media looks, just like it makes certain things foggy if you get mold or anything. That's the same thing that happens here. Um, that's not what we're reading. We're actually reading DNA that is grown in the cells, um, and we will do the analysis on that. But you can see how that changes. Yeah, and so were you like then taking a sample out of this and running tests on it? Sure, let me go show you what that looks like. There's okay. another laboratory where we do all of that for us. It's, it's grosser. <laughs> Essentially what we're doing is helping food rot to find out if it's dangerous while it rots. So that's what it smells like, is it smells like some rotting food uh, because we're putting it in conditions that's gonna grow bacteria, which is what rots your food. Oh wow, yeah. yeah, it smells really bad in here. So what she'll do here is she will open those samples after incubation and she'll remove a small amount of that. Uh, it goes through a process of heating and cooling an enzyme reaction to actually break apart the bacteria that is in there and look for the DNA. And these machines run the DNA to see if it actually has salmonella, listeria, E. coli, whatever bacteria we're looking for. So here you will see actual runs. A positive sample will have a peak like this, and the negative samples will really stay flat throughout the entire run. What kind of background do people have who work here? Most of our scientists here have backgrounds in biology, microbiology, chemistry. Um, we've hired people who've worked in all different fields because they all have similar experience and similar knowledge to bring to the industry. So this is one of the machines that we actually use to do metal analysis. So things like lead, uh, mercury, arsenic, this is what this machine does. So there's a part of this machine where it's plasma, which is basically the surface of the sun or hotter, uh, and it breaks it into its elemental compounds and it, we measure how they come off and we know when they come off so we can tell you how much metal is in a sample. So that's some sort of a crazy flame we're looking at. Yeah, that is uh, hotter than the surface of the sun, plasma essentially. Doesn't look very scary, but inside of that there's a lot of things happening. Okay, so this looks like a very different kind of lab. Yes, this is where we do a lot of our chemical analysis. We're doing chemistry for both food uh, and for environmental samples. And this is where we tell you what's in your food and environmental samples when it comes to things like protein, uh, the fat content. Those testing is all done here as well. So it's like if you needed to make like a nutritional label for something, you could figure that out here. Yes, we do a lot of nutritional labels. Any of those things that you see on the back of a package that says how much vitamins a thing has, we do all the testing here to provide okay. with clients. Uh, we'll even help you put your label together. So these machines are either, uh, this is a protein analyzer, these machines are actually looking at different things as they run through columns to separate them out. So would you put like a potato chip in there? Um, not a direct potato chip. We would handle it beforehand, we would grind them up, we make a fine powder for it, but we could do a potato chip, we could do dog food, we do everything here. If you're doing sort of experiments, we got some... Bill Nye the Science Guy action happening? Yes, this is for sulfite testing. Um, so essentially they are working on heating these samples and separating out the sulfites, which are then captured uh, in that liquid at the top there. So it boils the samples, recondenses it, and the sulfites come out, and that's what we're actually measuring here. As this liquid captures the sulfite in gas form, and as it collects that sulfite, it'll actually change color. So it starts off yellow, and as we detect sulfites, there'll be a color change to a more of a pink color. Okay, so so far, not too many sulfites. Doesn't look like it here. But these chunks are brewing in there, so something exciting is happening. There's still more experiment to run, yes. And so this is the last step of the process? Yes, once all the data is generated, it goes through a series of reviews, uh, and then it is compiled into reports, and we send those reports to the clients who send us their samples. We are sending hundreds of samples a day, so we have a whole team out here, and that's what they work with, is making sure our clients get all their results on time, get everything that they're looking for, and if they have any questions, we're here to answer them. And so you're not, you know, allowed to tell us, like, the clients you're working for or whatever, but odds are... I mean, like we're interacting with these clients that you're testing probably on a weekly basis. Oh, definitely. So a lot of the grocery items that you eat on a regular day um, are th things that come through here. And if they're not coming through here, they're coming through a lab very similar. Um, we might be testing the raw ingredients that are used to make those products, or we might be working with the final finished product that's out there on those shelves. Well, well Trevor, thanks so much for this tour. This was super informative. And thanks for testing our food. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Glad you got to see it. And hopefully you learned a couple of things too.